guys, my name is uh, Cassie and I go by Re and Crochet. No, that's my old one. Re and Be Crafty on Instagram. Yeah, and we labeled it a long time ago, but yeah. That's what I, my head is in, because that's my Twitch username. <laughs> no, still. Um, but it's been a while. It's been six months. No, six months. Three months. Three months. So a lot of things have happened for me. The job that is now permanent. It was a turned position before, but now it's permanent. So I'm so happy. So I am now official librarian of Regina Public Library here in Canada. I'm so happy. Uh, but a lot of things have changed. I am now hunting for a place and I, with a full time job, I got lots of money and I spend it and Things are, I'm better with spending now. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, things have been really good. Uh, it's been interesting moving to a different city and I'm just starting to get used to the community and my job as a community librarian. Uh, I'm still a little confused on the community aspect, but as a new librarian, that is something that I need to find out for myself. Whereas the operational side of things, I can definitely work out and do. <laughs> um, so I have done a lot of things and I wanted to get this down before my roommates come back home, come back into the house. So I might do this in sections because everything's scattered all over the place and tucked away. Um, I bought a lot of things. so. We'll see about that. There's my hair. It's like, what is going on there? It's like, where are you? Right here. Anyways. What should I do first? Um, let's do the brunette. So the Alphonse Mooch kit in this lovely bag. Uh, she's done. She is completely done. But except for the back stitching, like I haven't mustered up the strength to do the back stitching yet. Um, but she is done. So the last time you probably saw her, I was probably working my way up on the filigree, 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 and just coming it up and finishing it up here somewhere. So, but she is done, except for the back stitch. So that's, that's the next project that I need to do, uh, which is a bit daunting. I don't know where to start. Like, I don't know if backstitching, from my previous experience, backstitching is okay with a Q-snap. So it, I should just start somewhere, but I need to keep track. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. She's done. So that's the brunette from I'll put all the information down below I, I put all the information all the call for flosses or what uh, I put them down in the description below in a big list if I mention anybody it's in the list uh, I try to chronologically put it in the list so if I say a name of, or an artist it will be in the list I also check the closed captionings and make sure they spell correctly so if you want to turn on the closed captioning um, but she's done, and look at my rough, my working copy, it's all colored in. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's all colored in, that rough. <laughs> you can barely see her, but yeah. So, I can't work off of this for the back stitching, I have to use the actual pattern. So... That's a thing that I'll have to do. Shove her in there. All right. There, back in the bag. She'll go over there, go over here. All right, next is, right, next is the, the mermaid from Medusa Dollmaker. The artist is Medusa Dollmaker and the Gecko Rouge is the producer of these kits. 
So I brought the key snap from traditional stitches. More on that later. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but I wanted to see if the bigger size would help me out. So far, this is only like been third day of using this key snap. And you can see I also got a grind guard. And after the fact, I realized is that my previous grime guard is pineapples as well. So I clearly have a thing for pineapples. Don't get me wrong. But I'm trying to remember where I've been. I'll probably put the previous number that I said in the previous video down below somewhere on the screen. So that when I say that I am now... 21% done, 21.32% done. So which means I have done 39,000 stitches. Now, if I remember correctly, I was down below question mark, but I moved back up and I think I've done pretty much all of this, like this part. Yes, I think so, because I think I was here last time. So I've done all of this. And then when I got the new key snap, I'm starting to try and fill, fill in this part here before moving up to catch up here and then go across. But yeah, I choose a color and go for it. And you can see I'm still, I was definitely inspired to do this floss tube who was I watching? Museum Stitches. Museum Stitch? Stitcher? She's a brand new YouTuber as well. She's had three videos out. Love her. But I know how much it is to get into a museum and do what you love and think, oh, so happy for you, girl. So that's that. That's the muse mermaid. I'm really happy how she's doing. And then I got bored doing her. I wasn't doing her completely monotonously. Monogamous, monogamous. And so I picked up Baba Yaga. So Baba Yaga from Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is on the call for fabric and the call for flosses so far. Um, let me take it out the, out the hoop. Try not to lose the needle. I guess I seem to be losing needles left and right. But I picked up the Baba Yaga because this is also linen. Remember when I said I don't really like linen? Yeah, I tolerating it. So this is a brand new start for me. But look how I've gotten. Look how much. So much. So I'm doing all the black because I don't like how bright the the house is. Like the shing the shingles. Yeah, the shingles that go right here. They're too bright for my taste. So I'm probably gonna switch out the color of the actual house and put it in the shingles and doll it down a little bit. But I just needed something to black work and just pick up and just do something. So you can see I'm still filling in this under shadow of the deck. I, um, the hoop was down here going down the leg because I refuse to count on linen. I refuse to jump more than one or two. It's like, don't, because already I'm off by half a stitch because this is, um, What's the terminology? Two over two? Yes, two over two in linen. Um, so I the half a stitch I'm off somewhere and I know where I did it wrong. So I th think the start is around the skull. And so what I did is I counted down, started the leg, went across, went back up and went over here and then under. And this is where I miscounted. So this entire half 
this half of the house is off by one stitch. So I spent the time to meet up the two halves, I think up here somewhere, and consolidated, like made all the mistakes somehow line up. But I know that if I continue counting down from here, it's gonna be off by one stitch. So is, do I want to continue down this part of the leg and be correct and do the person, do Baba Gaga correctly? But if I remember correctly, it's easier to go from this side in. That is my dilemma. But yeah, all, oh, and another dilemma I have is that it's green. The magic is green. I don't like green. Lime green? No. So, in this lovely bag of mine, I went to Michael's and got myself a whole bunch of pink <laughs> and red. And I'm probably going to switch it out for three shades of red. But yeah, DMC doesn't have much shades in red. Very surprising. Um, but you also see in my haul that I purchased flosses from a bunch of other places for the red to see if I can match them up. The variegation is nice. Like this is um, the DMC variegated floss, red floss. This is an option just to jazz it up. But yeah. So that's. That is in the works. <laughs> Me just doing black work right now, and then when I have the brain power to figure out the color. Yeah, that would be a thing. So let me just put everything back in with this needle, elastic thingies, put it in back and in this bag. And another thing is that this is in paper, right? Because I got this in a box. So I have my working copy. <laughs> I don't like paper. That's probably why I counted wrong. <laughs> yes, blame the paper. Blame the paper. And then this is the Greek bestiary. I'm not going to take it out of the hoop because I quite honestly can't remember if I touched it since I talked to you. I think I have because I was doing the Hydra backstitching on the Hydra. So yeah, so I have two projects that need to be backstitched. And that's probably why I'm delaying, delaying on the brunette. But I have now done the Crimea. I think it's the Crimea. Yes, that is the Crimea. Yeah, because that's the Griffin. Okay, <laughs> Crimea. <laughs> Um, but I, yeah, I have done the back stitching. Let me see if I can get it nice without the shadow. Yeah. Yeah, so there's back stitching. She's not done yet. But yeah. So that's that. So much black. I'm going through so much black. It's quite funny. It's like, I'm pretty sure I have more black. And then I would go and buy some, and then it, I would open up my floss bag. Floss. Well, Bendy, Michelle Bendy Stitches calls it her floss monster. I call it my floss bag because it's, it's a big bag. Uh, but yeah, and those are all my whips so far. Yes, I haven't really started anything else. I haven't, I have kitted something. No, I haven't. I have had some fun dyeing some Ada. So that, that's part of Paul, question mark. So let me pause you while I collect my haul over here. Okay. Haul. Okay, so this comes with a little bit of a funny story for these. I'll stop the crinkle. I went to the farmer's market here in Regina, usually on a Saturday. Got up, rolled out of bed, got my tea, 
and then it was noon and I was talking to my roommate here and she said oh the farmers market ends at one you should go to the farmers market and yes I'll go to the farmers market straight away. I drove there and the farmers market shares the same park as something else that was happening <laughs> And I didn't know this. It was completely fenced off. And I was like, what's this? What's going on? Oh, you have to pay to get in? Oh, okay. I'll pay the, but the farmer's market. This is very weird for Regina to pay for you getting into your farmer's market. So I paid the 10 bucks to get in. Pipe bands, Irish dancing, Highland games. And look over there. That looks like a farmer's market outside the fence. So I had to make my money's worth. There was a couple booths there selling stuff. I was really liking their shirt. They called it the grandpa shirt. There was no collar, but it was made of 100% linen and it was pricey, like 75 bucks. And I was like, mm. looking around a little bit more. And then I saw these kind of tucked away inside. So these are birth, sorry, bookmark gifts. So this is the birds, Celtic birds. Okay, I don't know if, even know if I'm gonna do this. I have found that I'm a very picky cross stitcher. But why do you think I have put so much effort in mermaid? Because I love it. And that is the only reason why I'm continuing to stitch it is because I love it so much. This is like, oh, this is nice. So that's the Celtic birds, and this is the Celtic spiral. I'm so sorry that the light is not heading it nicely, but there we go. Let's cover that up because it's too late. <laughs> Celtic spiral. So it comes with the fabric, Ada, completely ribbed, like um, scallop edges, so it's all good to go. I just have to stitch it. Um, I think the floss is all tied up, so we'll I probably have to put them on floss drops and there's a felt so I'll have to felt the back easy easy peasy we'll see if I get around to doing that um, next it's getting full buying too much fabric or making too much fabric so this is the Ada that I dyed because I was looking for fabric for a hundred owls because I saw when you use the hashtag for a hundred owls, I'll put it down here somewhere. The hashtag that the owl force and Bordy was using for their sal. I was like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And there's one that had black background and I was like, I don't want black, black, but I wanted something dark black and so I dyed some Ada using some black Ritz so this is this is it this is the one I dyed for I haven't ironed it <laughs> I should iron it <laughs> but whatever so yeah this is it this is it this is um Yes, this was made with black Ritz dye. It's definitely not black. It turned more purplish. Um, like after I rinsed it out a few times, because I really don't prefer dye on my hands. So, and I was following the the tutorial for caterpillar, the caterpillar. I'll link them down below caterpillar cross stitch she was for the modeling and then this was made out of a this is using the ada that came with the gecko rouge kit but i subbed it out for a grid but the waste not whatnot. not so i dyed some more like from what you're seeing there's not much of a difference between the two but when they're all next to each other, it's a slight difference. It's because I did use different dye. So let me 
I did write down my notes. Like I did write down what dye I was using. Okay, so this one, the big one, I had one, the one, I didn't use the exact amount of measurements, but one, I did write it down, it's scientific, is it? One black and a splash of aquamarine. It turned out really dark purple. This one is charcoal gray. Um, yeah. And it is a very, it's like all of them turned out some sort of purple-ish. So, let me see if I can. I'm back. All resolved. Crisis averted. And then the last piece that I dyed was with navy and a splash of black. So, it's very much bluer. Not even a word bluer yes hopefully I'll use these for something but you can see the color differences so this is the blue this is a charcoal gray and this is the black so you can see the slight differences between them all come on light be nice to me today So, quite honestly, the charcoal gray is almost a lighter version of the black now. Uh, and this is definitely blue. I don't know. More for next time. Like, yeah, I don't know how, what I would do next time. But that was a nice little experiment using my lip dye and gloves set up and everything and then let me grab this box again okay i purchase i watch carolina from evertotes what's her, her her youtube channel off the needle off the needle art it's down below I'll put it down below. And a lot of people know about Caroline with her love relationship with Jacob and Mona for embroidery and her being the only place to get Leo and Roxy floss. I watch her with passion. She's funny and quirky and searching her entire channel, I saw that she had, okay, William Morris. We'll get back to that. We'll circle back to that. Hopefully we'll circle back to it. But I bought a bunch of things off of her. And that included Night Owl. So this is from a kit. Night Owl Linen. 18 count. And this is one quarter of a yard. I saw this and I thought it would be perfect for 100 owls. But this is after the fact that I... Before the fact that I made the effort to dye these. And it took me forever to get this. It involves the shipment going to my original address. So that's fun. But yeah, this is Night Owl, which is perfect because it's going for 100 owls, but no modeling. Beautiful, beautiful, but no modeling. So what do you think? What do you think? Do I, did I? I also got more fabric from another company. So I'll talk about that, that. But I may actually pose a question to you guys and see which one I should do. Like there's slight modeling at the bottom, which doesn't help. <laughs> but that's Night Owl from Neo Roxy. All nicely surged and everything. And yeah, that's nice. So that's 18 count. So I'll keep these out so we can make a comparison later. I'm almost like I'm a real floss tuber. <laughs> All right. So, I, and I bought a whole bunch of flossies for Baba Yaga, as well as just to 
unlock them because I could. Just because I can. So, this comes from my floss bag. Massive floss bag. It has all my DMC in there and multiple little bags. This is all my specialty. Like, all the stuff from Dark Queen of the Sea. All the specialty. Krynek, Treasure Petite Treasure Blade. They're all in here just to keep it separate. And then this is where. Oh, look at that! This was for the Memento Mori. Like, you can see the label there. This is for Memento Mori. Very deep under there. And what's in here? Oh, my pens. The pens I use to. Friction pens. They're not all in there now because they're all over the house. And then this is. Yeah, this is my floss monster. Oh, all my DMCs. Let's just put that back in. <laughs> Alright. But I bought a whole bunch of Neo Roxy flosses just for the reds. And then I just kind of accumulated the blacks. So these are a lot of the reds. So I'm probably going to take a few of the reds because they, they're such nice, beautiful shades together. Like, look at that. And those are all different. Slightly different. And then I'll probably throw in this because it does require a bright green. So let me pull that out. Let me pull out the call for colors of green for Baba Yaga. So let's see here. There's the tree. There's the great. So those are the three greens required for Baba Yaga. So 368, 320, and 772. So those are all the greens required for the Baba Yaga. I am going to probably switch them out with something from this floss. <laughs> like a few pinks. I got options in pinks and a medium red. I got some lots of options there. And then a really dark red. So I've got two options there. Foul of red or red E or not. Oh Lucia is the one, not the other deep red. There's foul of red is too dark. Foul of red is this one. It's too dark. Encore. If you really want to take a deeper look at what these colors are, may I suggest you go to Caroline at Overtotes. And she does a really good, here's a close up of the color and so forth. I am not going to do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'll just show them all from here. Look at all these beautiful colors. Oh, they're so good. The variegation is so good. Love it. And then I kind of. Me missing my blacks. Me, 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 my blacks. Like, so I got a few blacks here. Like, blacks. Like, um, Darkest Sage is the turf boss. There's one. Can I? Like, you can barely tell. Ooh, there we go. Look at all that variation. And now. And then I got a few grays. So that's Leo and Roxy. All this lovely. If I get it more, I have to get another one. <laughs> another little thing to hold them all. And it goes back into my crinkle bag of all my fancy flossies. Uh, eventually, it will get a, a, a place of pride in my new place. Hopefully, there's not in the bag. One can hope. One can hope. Okay. So this is brine and needles. So these 20 stitches, they released a kit. Is that one with the Iron Maiden in it? Bright pink. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, but I'm, as I say this, black fabric, gray fabric, 
white floss. That might be interesting. Anyways, as soon as they said brine and needle, Canadian company, I was like, give it. I, I like Canadians. They just say sorry a lot more than everyone else. <laughs> I, I bought a few of their flosses when they restocked. Again, darker colors, red. And so, let me let me showcase this to you. Let me actually do a floss for like natural. How do floss tubers do it? <laughs> so a rover of high degree, very bright purple, very dark purple. How do I do this? Let's see. Will you focus on that? I am not prepared to do it. <laughs> dark purple. Rover of high degree. Sweeter after the frost. Very nice red. Kiss the cod. Kiss the cod. It's very gray, but a few speckles of color in there. So kiss the cod. Hag stones, hag stones. So this is a very nice gray, black, but a lot of variegation in it. A lot of green and purple. Let's see if I can do this this way. A lot of variegation in it. And then Bell Island Core. This is a very darker Hag stones, but more black, but still a lot of variegation in it. Let's see if I can. I'll probably get better light next time. I'm in a basement. What can you expect? So that's a. Like this one is a good one. Of course, it's not going to focus on it, but you can see it. So that's six stranded floss. 10 yards. We'll see if I ever use them. <laughs> Canadian. Woo! Local ish. Yay. That's the wind. That's the wind more than anything else, right? Okay. The next thing I bought was when I was debating the Owl Force and Birdie 100 owls in my research. I was looking at all those companies that did fabric and Ships Manor popped up to me and that's what I bought a few of their things. Where are they all? Here. So I bought a few of their things. This is Mummy Wraps 16 count 18 by 26. You can't, one can't go for that if you have a little bit of a Egyptology in your, in your blood. I could, I, stop me now. So I bought that. Probably do that for, would I use that for June? If I ever do it? Maybe. And I didn't realize how bright this was. But it's nice. And Niven, and Niven, N I V E N, A uh, 18 count 26 by 36. So I was thinking this for something else, not the big piece. Was I thinking this for uh, Halloween at Hawkwood? Ha Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. I'm not taking these out of the bags, I'm sorry, but it's pretty bright yellow. I don't know if I'm gonna use that. And then these two. I'm slightly disappointed with this one. Let me actually get this one out and show it to you because this is All Souls Night Ada 26 by 36, 16 count. This is black. It is black with a slight purple tinge and this light. It is just pure black, no modeling, nothing at all. Beautiful. 
play if I I ran out of black Ada. So this is nice. I'll hold on to that preciously with the rest of my stash that can no longer fit in the box anymore. And I look jealously on those people who can organize their floss in such like um, comic stock things and label them nicely, put them away. I am jealous of them. This, this was a win. This was a win. This is Abracadabra, Ada 30, sorry, 26 by 36, 16 count. Love the labels. Like, look at the back of that. What does it say on the top? Ships Manor 1852. If that's an S, it's 52. So this is a win. It's coming across more green, but it is black. It is a greenish black. Let me see if taking this out color alters. So that's black for sure. So I guess in this it's very green black, but it's more gray than green. So good. The modeling. So good. Let me try not to cover my mouth. Sorry. Oh, so good. The modeling. Perfection. Okay. So this is another good option for a hundred dollars. So let me pose this question to you. Abracadabra by Chips Manor. My personal died. <laughs> Flop. <laughs> personal died Ada. <laughs> or Night Owl from Owl um, Evertote. So modeling, modeling, no modeling. Uh, very charcoal or very purple like this this is not doing it justice i wonder if i can get yeah maybe that's a better color look yeah that's a better color look that is a bit better it's not green but very gentle so that those are my options dun, 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 dun. those are my options help me decide please and of course, Ships Manor also have floss. I couldn't help myself. Crinkle. I could not help myself with more floss from Ships Manor. So, wow, I did buy a lot. Okay. So, purple, very lots of variegation purple. Ships, sorry. Witches Knickers. And then thunder. So it's almost like witches knickers, but it has a lot more green variegation in it. There we go, the green variegation. Uh, splendiferous, splendiferous. Oh, you, you read it, you decide how you say that. And it's a very good green, dark green, light green, medium green. Crone. I seem to be liking all the crone references. Baba Yaga. Hagstones. So this is a more of a teal blue than anything. Twenty twenty eight. Twenty twenty eight. Special must be specialty. Um, it's very much like taste. Kiss the cod from. Briny needle, but it is um, a lot more speckles, a lot more variegation. You can definitely see the speckles in there. Uh, bleak house, bleak house, gray, very gray with lots of variegation. Uh, twisted oak. Look at that. Twisted oak. 
ganache brown. I wonder if it's because I'm getting this brown is because I was thinking about what's that bookshelf? Sh not not the one that Bendy Stitchy is doing with the color temperatures, but it's um I'll put it here. It is using it is using a classic color works chocolate ganache, I think it's called. That, that somebody else is using to kind of make it the variegation to make the brown pop out on the bookshelf. So I might have been got that for that the thought in my head. Um, Pele's Tears Black. It is pretty black with a bit of more charcoal in it. Looks like chalkboard from Leo Roxy, but it is black, pretty black. Red Rover. We'll see if I choose this for Baba Yaga's red. But those are all the ship's manners colors. Like you don't realize what you have until you show them off. <laughs> I thought I got less. Oops. I put that there. What else did I buy? Hall wise. Oh yes. So once my job became permanent. Permanent, permanent, permanent. I treated myself. I been hunting for a few of these books. I would go to various bookstores, local bookstores, used bookstores to try and find these books. I could not find them. And on the Regina Public Library had access to two of them. And then when I borrowed them, I was like, yeah, I want this these books permanently to own and have. Um, so I bit the bullet. I went to Amazon. <gasps> I know, Amazon. I purchased these books. And then of course, when you go into suggestions, other people have bought this. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, there we go. A stack of books that's dragged here. This is, my William Morris kick. So this, let me see which one is this, this one at the bottom. This kick started in. No. Did D20 Stitches kick started this obsession? They did. So they were looking at the birds, the burbs, the birds, the strawberry thief and so forth that got ripped out of their copy. It's in my copy. <laughs> I love it dearly. Like, look at those burps. Anyway, I think I'm probably gonna try and make a cushion because my grandmother gave me her own old Victorian chair. It needs to be reholstered and everything, but I want a cushion on it. I want a William Morris cushion on it. This is long-term plans, people. Long-term plan. I then that got recommended to me, and then I knew that I, and all uh, another bookstore had. But this is uh, Candace Bathmuth. Candace Bathmuth. She published a different book. It had romance in it. It was based on romance. Like different medieval romance things in it. I'll put down the title here when in, in the list below. But she, I was eyeing this up as well. This is one of the books that I was looking for forever. And I also purchased that as well. And never seen the insides. So when I got it, I was really happy to see. Best cross stitch. Very tempting. Very tempting. But this is needle point. So I would have to do a rougher canvas or a bigger count. But is there much of a difference between cross stitch and needle point? Like, yeah, sh after a few Googling attempts, wool does seem to be better for an heirloom project. So that'll be my direction that I have to go. Um, 
there is a playing card cushion with playing cards. Look at that, like tarot cards too. So there is like the sun, uh, the king, the jester, the queen, like, yeah, so that's that one. And then, what kicked me off onto the William Morris one, I think. What is it? I guess in one of his suggestion ones, Beth Russell name came up. So I bought two of her books. Beth Russell's Traditional Needlepoint, William Morris, The Woodpecker, and The Orange Tree. So this is the book I really enjoyed. Oh, so let's see if I can get a closer look because I think it's Caroline. In her old videos, she had this framed and she was talking about it. And I saw it. There you go. There's the connection. There, there's the connection. So she framed it and she had it in her house and she was talking about it. And that kind of started, that, that introduced me to this book. And she was using this book to create that. So, and that she, the same author, published this one. This is a newer edition. This is probably what I'll be using for my patterns. So this is the Beth Russell's Arts and Crafts Needlepoint. This has a more complete William Moore's focus. And there are so many burps, so many strawberry thieves. There's two versions of strawberry thief. Like, okay, I'll take it, but they're not. They're not big and elaborate. That's my concern. So let's see if I can find another picture of them. They're not big and elaborate. And then, but they have Lauden. So L O D D E N. And I was like, ooh, that is tempting. So, so many, but so little time. What was it in here that I was also really enjoying? is kind of yeah country flowers so country flowers in spring and summer so this is spring and then this one is summer and they did it in black and i'm like that is witchy that is witch that's calling out witch <laughs> i want it <laughs> so i am contemplating doing this together like, too bad that she doesn't do fall. Like, is there a fall and winter so I can have them all together? Because that is the plan. Like, I'll probably do one of the buttercup, one of the iris, and then one of the poppy, one of the cornflower all together with the various flowers on top once. Because she did give snowdrops for here in the, in the pattern, and she gave daisies here as well. So this, what is this one? Buttercups. Smaller, like the, the summer flowers, it's buttercups. This one, this one. And then they have daisies. And then, of course, I purchased these two together. They're not really that helpful or great. I just purchased them. Purchased them. But... You know what? This one is the Metro using objects from the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Don't get me wrong, love it, love it. In the back, oh, and this is the one that has a page ripped out. This has a page the pattern ripped out, but it's not one that I would do. So I won, and this was a used library book. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a librarian, it's like, oh, scandalous. But this one would be in this kind of interest me. That's I think I looked at this one first, and then I was like, "That's awesome." So, and yeah, this is Candace Bumuth again, like the same author as one of those other books. 
she did a rug. Let's see if I can make a picture of that. No impressions in the rug. So this book has the pattern for the rabbit, the squirrel, and the hound. No, it just has the squirrel in this one. Nope, it has all three. It has all three. But in this rug, there's the falcon, the partridge, and the monkey. I think that's a partridge. No, it's not partridge. It's a, was it quail? I don't know what they're called. Anyways, and I know the monkey is in the other book. So there's got to be more books out there that has the hawk and this this bird, whatever that bird is. Let me just see if I can get it better. No, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try. And this one's interesting because there's a previous note from Ginger's in Austin, Texas. It comes with a needle in it. The note to the previous owner, Dear Jody. So it has a note all written and everything from Ginger. And talking about a new employee did not get the quantity discount and so forth. So I really enjoyed reading that, seeing the history of the previous owner of the book from Ginger's. So those are my book purchases. Really big ones. <laughs> right, let me take a look at my notes and see if what else did I miss. Oh yes. So I went to back to Calgary last weekend and I went to do traditional stitches. They were open for visits again. Limited, but yes, yeah, visits. So I Popped my head in there, and that was the first time I've really been into a L I L N S local needle sh needle workshop. Carved samplers on the walls. Very tempting for me as not someone who self-proclaimed sampler hater. Looking at them, yeah, I could definitely see why floss tubers say, "Yeah, take a look at it in person," and then you say you want to do it. Um, there was a few there that I was like, I want to do these. Um, what is this blue flower Tudor bee was one of them. So, and I was looking for tiny, tiny modernist so that butterflies, the butterfly one that is new, like brand new. So I have to wait for, I'm waiting for that to come out in digital copy because I'm not, as much as I love going shopping for paper patterns, I prefer them in digital so I don't I don't have enough space it's it's a it's a thing not enough space people not enough space and, and I am very limited in space so I went to traditional stitches because I've ordered Gloriana silk from them and it finally got fulfilled like I ordered it like a year ago for the get crackened to do the in completely in Gloriana, but that was before I was like, let's turn it into Sea of Thieves. But now I have all the Gloriana. I'll probably still do it in Gloriana silks. Is it Gloriana silks? Is it silks? Anyway, Gloriana. I'll do that with that and make some, making it prettier and more expensive. <laughs> but I picked up that silk and then I picked up that Kishnap frame the bigger one, along with the pineapple <laughs> grind guard. Um, yeah, and that's when I purchased from them. Not that they were trying to tempt me harder to buy more stuff there. Um, I also got a couple boxes. One I won't talk about because I don't want to promote them. Yeah, I don't want to talk about them. The other one is Boys and Gardens. Like such a nice different size of a tote bag, I think. But the reason why I got them is because who's who's in it that I was like, I must have them. 
I think it was Witchy Stitcher. Yeah, the Witchy Stitcher. Um, the Poisonous Plant. I can't show it to you because then the other page has Bendy Stitches designs on it. Can I make sure I don't this one? Yeah, there we go. That one. I want to do this one on the whole All Souls Night from Ships Mana. Hmm? If I have the flosses. And they did come with two flosses. Three flosses? I can't count. The three flosses. So they're very nice pink, purple, and classical white. Those are nice. Um, came with the floss drop, poison gardens. Very nice engraving. And then the wax melts. I have expressed an interest in getting wax melts, but I can't do them here. So once I move into my new place, I will look at them. Because I haven't really found a wax melt base that I enjoy because they're all for modern homes. Like, give me something unique. So if you have a company that you really enjoy that does ceramics for wax melt and they're different and unique, let me know because I don't want a classic green looking one that you just, you know, I want something that stands out, does its job. Whew. I don't know about this. It's very sparkly. This is my first sparkly iridescent Ada. Like, how sparkly does it need to be? Like, everyone says it's sparkly. I'm like, yeah, that is sparkly. And you can kind of tell where it's been folded. But it's very nice. I don't know what I'm going to do on it, but very nice. And the print, the varieties of mur murderous plants from Awkward Affections. Very nice. That's that kit. I probably have to move the pattern book out of this bag because it's in the bag. Or do I just flip it out? So that's knitting. I think that's that. That's cross stitch. I think that's everything cross stitch related. Let me take a pause and then I'll talk about my other crafts because I did a few other things. Let's take a pause. Ah! Okay. I say after I need to grab my, after putting everything away, all the crinkling noise is gone. I'm gonna talk about my knitting and my sewing actually. Um, my flag means death. Our flag means death. That new TV series that everyone's going bonkers over. I haven't seen it, but I they were talking about banyas, like the wrapping robes that he was wearing. And I was like, oh, so good. And a few people from the historical com costuming community um, made some. And I was like, I want to make this. So I did. I did. I went on a spree. I did it in a day, a day and a half. It was my day off, not my two days off, and I did it in a day and a half. Um, so I went to Peach Tree Quilting Store. Spent too much money on this type of fabric, but I would never. I I wanted to do it. I wanted to be the typical librarian and buy fabric that has books on them. So I bought fabric that has books on them. And then I bought like a red lining. Very, so, so good. And I made myself a banya. Ignore the rope. <laughs> because I was trying so many things on this thing. Like it didn't, the pattern I grabbed from a 
random YouTube. It didn't come with pockets. So I put pockets in it and it didn't have a, a belt. So I was thinking I can do it without a belt. And after I had it for a few days, I was not wearing it because I had no belt. So I mocked up a loop, put it on, and then I stole from my old house coat, my big fluffy house coat that is only appropriate for winter. <laughs> Stole that for that and then now it's on here so I, it stays with this. But I have extra fabric that I just haven't gotten around to making a thing like this because it's... Anyways. So it's a big lawn house coat. Very proud of myself for making this because it's historically accurate for men's. Is that you cut... Like you cut the... Um, you fold it in half, you measure how much you want it to overlap. And then add extra length for the sleeves which you can barely tell that i had to add sleeves to this oh there's way up here like the seam is way up here um like my very basic sewing challenge brain is trying to figure out the order of operations to make this thing <laughs> i like don't look at the inside i'm showing this so far away don't look at the inside don't look at the hems i still have my basing stitches in <laughs> it's like don't look at it closer but it's my pride and joy i'm so happy it's done i'm wearing it all the time like nobody needs to see me in my pajamas somebody needs to me to drive them home after a very long afternoon of drinking and they come down the stairs and say can you can you drive us home Yes, I can, because I have my house coat on. And it's a house coat. It's a banyan. B-A-N-Y-A-N, if you wanted to look it up. I, I'll put a playlist. I'll link a bunch of playlists down below of who I followed, sorry, who I watched to make this. Like, it's my historical customers hand stitch it all. It's like, no. <laughs> sewing machine as far as like basting saved so much time I did not have my pins with me they're still packed away so basting really helped that's why they're still in here I hand stitch the top part the top rectangle but the hem no I but I hand stitch this because it makes sense yeah I'm very happy really proud of myself the pockets clearly do not work because the opening, first of all, is too small and is right on my natural waist. Yes, my natural waist. And of course, that's where I tie my... So it doesn't work. So if I have to ever do this again, it would be a U-shaped pocket on the front. Smack dab it right there. It's because... These don't get used and there's an eyesore in the middle of the oldest red but you learn you learn so that's my sewing project over there um my knitting project so i have two projects in here so let's put this one out and then talk about this one so this is using the leftover yarn from the previous shawl project <laughs> I should have watched my previous videos to figure out if I showed it or not I must have anyways this is the leftover yarn I um, just took a random pattern like a very shallow C crescent why do I have a stitch mark right here? Did I show this to you? <laughs> Using the gradient to get rid of the yarn, I am now here. I am procrastinating on it because there's only this much left. All the yarn information is on the, what the fade what the fade by Andrea 
Maori, Maori, Maori. Last previous videos, this is where the information is for that. The previous shawl. This pattern is, I am so off the, the pattern on this. I don't even think I'm following the, the pattern anymore. I'm just trying to get rid of this yarn, basically. What it looks like when it's off the needles, I don't know. <laughs> Let me just shove that in there. Okay, this project. I did a swatch. You would be so proud of me. I did a swatch. Yeah. Do your swatches, people. And then, so this is a sweater. Sweater slash t-shirt. I'm probably not going to do the sleeves. But I have done the yoke. The yoke is done. And there's a crochet hook in my pattern. So I've done the yoke. It fits nicely. And then now I'm underarms and it's all just knit from there and around. Let me put the yarn in this. It's me. It's a vagina dyer. Um, but it, this the pattern is a free pattern by Tin Tin Can Knits. It has this patterning on the sleeves. Um, I didn't want to mess around with it because I've never really had a sweater that fit me nicely. So I'm just, I continued it, see how that goes. If I, and I will, if I have to do it again, I probably won't do the patterning on the sleeve on the, but anyways. Uh, underarm, just straight knitting. Like you can see the pattern. I wonder if they can see. Not really, actually. There's two balls in this. So I'm on the second ball. The first ball is over there somewhere. Very left, little left it. But you know when you have really variegated local dyed skeins, you want to merge them, overlap them, so that you don't see there's one ball and there's a second ball. How nice. I don't want that to happen next one. So you can't really tell, hey? <laughs> There's pooling. There's definitely pooling. But it's so widely variegated that it doesn't really matter. Let me see if I can find her. Yep, I do see it. <sighs> Cut! Cog yarns. Vagina Saskatchewan. So, cog yarns. Uh, so those are the notes actually. That's really handy. <laughs> There's a reason why I keep this around. Uh, basic sock, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. So it's perfect for socks, but I don't like making socks. Uh, the color is merino. Yeah. So I have maybe two more skeins of this. So I could technically do the sleeves, but I'm not going to do that. Nobody's got time for that. So that's my knitting. I haven't really done much knitting because I take this to work and work is too busy for me sometimes. But I um, haven't done much knitting. There's been a few days where I bounced between my projects. Like I bounced between the mermaid, the Baba Yaga, the no, I have looked at the brunette a few times and I went, no, I don't want to do the backstitching. I think that's everything now. I don't know how long this video is now. And I just realized I didn't really have an introductory to myself other than the, the update. And I know I recorded a few bits of myself because I was regretting not recording for so long so I recorded myself a few times that would probably be in extra stuff or bloopers I have to go look in this computer's files and find out what I recorded myself <laughs> doing something who knows 
happens, I think that's everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here and listening to what I have to say, even though I feel like it's going into the void, shouting into the void. Um, but thank you for being here. Thank you for any comments that you put down. I love comments. I love feedback. And even though I, I don't respond to those comments. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And have a great day. I think I gave you all the information you needed on it, but you won't work. I mean, look at that. Look at that variegation. No. Anyway, I'm super happy with it. I'm, I'm really glad that that's finished. Hello, everyone. Again, I didn't record an introduction to myself. My name is Cassie. I go by she, they. Um, do I really need an introduction? <laughs>